Hello and welcome back to Cryptocurrency Trading Masterclass by Wealthy Education. In this video, we're going to talk about how to trade based on trend following, following indicators. So the first indicator that we'll talk about is a moving average. There is a, a whole list of types of moving averages. The two most common are simple and exponential. The uh, simple moving average is an indicator that plots n. So n might be, say, 20. So it'll plot the last or the average price of the last 20 candlesticks. Normally the close, you can you can adjust it to open and highs and lows and everything else. But 99% of the time you're talking about the close. So it plots it like, uh, you know, like a dot on the chart and then it connects it. So it becomes a line, much like a price chart. This is simply the close of uh, Stellar 30, uh, 30 minute chart. So everywhere you see this market, like it closed there on at that 30 minute time frame, there at that 30 minute increment, et cetera, et cetera. A, a simple moving average is the same thing. And then if you change it to 200, then it's just the average price of the last 200. There is the exponential moving average, EMA, and that's the same thing. So N equals, say, 20. So that's your variable. It would plot the last 20 closes. But this has a mathematical adjustment in it that puts a little bit more weight on each time period so like candle uh bar whatever going forward so it it makes it much more sen sensitive it tends to move a little quicker uh in reaction because it puts more weight like say maybe on the last five than it does on the first 15 it's really the only difference so setting them up pretty simple you go to the indicators and strategies and you can type in moving moving average and you can see there's a ton of them but we're just going to worry about uh moving average and moving average exponential so for shorter time frame trading you tend to want uh exponential just because it's a little quicker to move and you can see over here it listed and then there are some lines so i'm going to change the price to bars just so you can see by default It'll be nine. So we'll leave that there. But this one will change to 20. Maybe we'll make it like black or something that makes it a little bit easier to see. And you can see the difference. You can see that the nine, the average of the last nine prices, uh, tends to move quicker than the last 20. That makes sense. There's more. Uh, it, it's a much shorter time frame. Uh, there are a multitude of ways to look at this. People use it as a trend signal a lot of times. So you can see with both of these, trend up, trend down, trend up, trend kind of sideways, down, up, up, sideways, down, etc. That's the most common way to use it. Um, some people will use a crossover signal. So, for example, you get a lower one, a shorter EMA and a longer EMA. And if the lower one rises above the longer EMA, that suggests that the shorter term momentum is turning to the upside and you see it kind of fan out over time. That's a good sign. Just as when it crosses to the downside, that suggests a downward trend. Now. Some people will even go so far as to use a crossover system. So it crossed here. So on this candlestick, you would be a buyer. And then it crossed here. And on this candlestick, you would either get out or you would start selling. Um, this is one of those things that if you do it, you're going to experience a lot of um, small losses 
and then occasionally you will see a bigger win like that. And this is going to be especially true on longer term setups. So looking at uh, Bitcoin Cash, let's change this to the daily. And again, let's change this to bars just so we can see the indicators a little easier. So in this one, we'll use simple moving averages. So you click on that, you can see that they're there. But I'm going to change the settings to the 50. Let me make that red. And then I'm going to change this one to the 200. I'm going to make this black. Okay, so average of 200 days worth of prices, average of 50 days worth of prices. It's uh, a simple moving average, meaning that it just takes the raw uh, information. Now, that cross formed here, and this is what is known as the golden cross. And you can see when this works, it really works. The short time frame, in this case 50 days, um, breaks above 200 days, and it just takes off like a rocket in Bitcoin Cash. However, you can see that it produces the occasional whipsaw, and that's the, that's the problem with a moving average crossover system. You have to be willing to accept several small losses for a huge, big trend following one. Binance coin. So I'll go ahead and change this to bars again, just for simplicity. We'll go to the one hour. Now let's go back into. You can you can also type in EMA if you want moving average exponential. It's the first thing it pulls up. And this is the nine. And again, let's go back to the twenty. Okay. So you can see that. It's a lot of back and forth. So the problem you run into, like I said, is if you just trade just the crosses, you could run into serious trouble. Um, but when they work, they work for a very long time. Otherwise, what traders will do is just sim simply look at the, the moving average itself and just use that as your directional bias. Pretty straightforward. No need to overcomplicate it. Let's go to the daily. And let's change this to that 5,200. Now, remember, we had the golden cross previously. This is the death cross. This is a very bearish sign long term. That's the golden cross. You can see the golden cross work there. The death cross, I mean, it kind of worked. But not really. The Golden Cross here definitely did. Uh, the The problem is, though, if you wait for the cross, that's not until you get to this candlestick. And if you wait for, you know, so really, you would have only captured that much of that entire move. So moving average crossover systems, they tend to work better with investments. Uh, you have to be willing to ride out that type of back and forth. So those are trend following signals. You can, you can see or indicators. You can see that this indicates that we are going, um, higher. So let's remove that indicator and let's look at something called the MACD. Moving average convergence divergence. Now, this is whether or not the moving averages are squeezing together or spreading out based upon the 12. Uh, and the 26. So it's essentially a moving average system. Some people will put moving averages on top of it. It's probably overkill, but some people prefer that extra uh, boost, if you will. You can do the signal crossover, you know, breaking up above just like you would with a moving average. And that would have been an entry. Um, 
you can also use what they call the zero line cross. So zero right here where the histogram goes green and red, meaning positive or negative. So every time it turns green, you'd be a buyer. Every time it turns red, you'd be a seller. Some people wait for a signal line to cross to the downside or upside to be a seller. So they might be a seller there. Just as they would be a buyer here, because we crossed over the uh, zero line with a cross shortly before it, and that's you know that's one of those confluence things that makes quite a bit of sense. And then finally, um, you know, I'll go into stellar lumens here, and I'll remove these indicators, and I'll do the MACD over here. So, it's a little early to tell at this point, but it does look like we made a lower high here on the moving averages while we made a higher high here. This is negative divergence. And what this means is when an oscillator, this is part of a family of indicators called an oscillator. When it fails to make a higher high while price does, that means that it's diverging from the price, and that means we may be running out of momentum. So in theory, that is a sell signal, and it did work, at least so far. We broke the zero line, so we'll see what happens to the seller uh, next. Now, this is on the 30-minute chart, so you can only read so much into it, because, again, you like the idea of Higher time frames, not lower uh, for indicators as far as reliability. Notice resistance here, resistance here, resistance here, crossover here, bearish crossover. So certainly the, the MACD can be very useful. You never want to really use a MACD in a sideways market like this. It'll produce a lot of false signals. But if you get any type of significant swing, it becomes much more interesting. So in the next video, I'll throw out some examples in real life, show you exactly how you could have used this in multiple instances with uh, the moving averages and the MACD.